I agree. We can get uh, into the program and then once he arrives, he'll take over the chair. Okay, sounds good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started this meeting. Um, I've, go, I've We've gone through our checklist. Um, good evening and welcome to the second regional public meeting of the Maryland Citizens Redistricting Commission. This meeting is being recorded. As we begin, there are a few matters to share regarding the rules and policies for this evening's meeting, as well as some tips about the platform that will assist our speakers in understanding how the platform will work. First of all, there is a three minute allotment for speakers so that everyone who wants to speak can speak. When there is 20 seconds left of your time, there will be a screen share with a countdown timer that will come onto the screen and just letting you know to wrap things up. Inappropriate speaking, attire, behavior, or background will result in removal from the meeting without the option to rejoin. To avoid any confusion as to how to communicate a request to speak, the raise hand option is available, but we ask that if you want to speak, you do so in the chat box. Anyone registering after 5 p.m. today should ask to join as a speaker in the chat section rather than raising your hand. Your name will not be on the pre-registered list, again, if you registered after five o'clock today. In order to see the list of attendees, to ensure that your name is listed correctly, you will need to check your Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. You will click on participants, and from there you should see a list of panelists and attendees. In this case, panelists represents the commission members and attendees represents the audience, which, which, rep, which are the speakers. I tell you that because it's important to know that if you look at the attendees list, that you can check from the toolbar at the bottom of your screen and check that participants list. Please make sure that your name is correct in that list. It's what we go from to call the speakers. So if you have, um, if you ask to speak in the chat bar, it's important that we know who you are in that attendees list. If you do register, if you did not register to speak, but you decide that you would like to speak, that is where you will sign up via the chat feature. The control bar is again at the bottom of your screen and you will select the chat box and then send a message to the panelists indicating your name and the county in which you reside. We will then call your name in turn. Speakers should ensure their name is listed properly again. And if not, you can fix it by right clicking and indicating that you'd like to rename and that way you can rename yourself to the correct name. Pre-registered speakers will go first. Then chat request speakers will be called in order of request. Speakers providing testimony should be aware that they will be made a panelist, which will enable them to unmute and turn on their camera. There may be a short delay while the speaker's screen goes from attendee to panelist. This is normal. The speaker will then see a screen message indicating that the host would like to promote you to panelist. The speaker needs to accept by clicking the join as panelist button. We will wait five seconds for the speaker to go live. If the speaker does not join, we will move on to the next speaker and come back at the end and call on anyone who missed their time to speak. Once speakers are finished, we must move them back to being an attendee. This may result in the speaker seeing a spinning wheel or message on their screen indicating that they are rejoining the meeting. The speaker is not being removed in the meeting. The Zoom platform is simply changing screens. So there's no need to click any buttons. You're just simply going back to the attendees section. Finally, specific to this evening's meeting, we want to make sure that anyone joining um, is aware of the fact that we have been made aware of an issue regarding school redistricting in Harford County. We, we want you to understand that that is completely unrelated to this Maryland Citizens Redistricting Commission process. The commission is addressing congressional and legislative redistricting only. 
it has come to our attention that there is signage around Harford County regarding school redistricting. But again, that does not play a role in this process that we're discussing tonight. We know that this is a lot of information, but want to assist you in understanding how this meeting will operate so it can go as smoothly as possible. With that, I would like to introduce you to our host for this evening, who, and I just want to make sure if um, Judge Williams has joined us. Not yet, um, Kristen. Not yet. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over um, to Dr. Kate Hetherington for now. Um, Judge Alex Williams is having some technical difficulty joining the Zoom call. All right, good Dr. evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. And Kristen, thank you for giving all the information prior to the meeting. Uh, we are waiting for Judge Williams. We know he ha is having some technical difficulties. And my guess is because our other co-chair is on the phone, he may be talking to Judge Williams. Walter, what, what news do you have about I, the judge? I just got off the phone with Judge Williams. He says that uh, he has lost his computer network connection, so he's unable to come in the usual way uh, by video. He says that he would still like to join by phone, so if Kristen can send him the phone number, he can attend, although um, he'll only be getting a phone version of what's going on tonight. But he asked us to continue um, understanding that uh, that's how he'll probably attend, and, and I guess will probably not be interested in sharing the meeting uh, from, from uh, without being able to see the, the video. All right, um, that's fine. Uh, Walter, would you like me to proceed? I can do that. Yeah, please go ahead, yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm sorry that Judge Williams um, cannot serve as co-chair because he does it so much better than I, uh, but let me introduce myself to the audience. I'm Kate Hetherington. I'm president of Howard Community College one of three co-chairs. I'm a resident of Howard County. And uh, Judge Williams is also one of the co-chairs and hopefully we'll be hearing his voice soon. Um, but if not, he's in um, Prince George's. And then Walter, you wanna introduce yourself and then I'll ask all the members to join, uh, to introduce themselves one by one. Walter, you wanna go next? Sure, uh, my name is Walter Olson. My day job is with a think tank in Washington, DC. I live in Frederick County. All right, thank you, Jay. Good evening, Jay Amin. I'm a development director with Maryland Land Advisors in Ellicott City, and I'm a resident of Anne Arundel County. Thank you, Cheryl. Good evening, I'm Cheryl Brooks, principal of Berkshire Elementary in Baltimore County Schools, and I'm a Baltimore County resident and glad to be commissioner. <laughs> Thank you. Mayor? Hello, I'm Mary Clausen. I'm a resident of Anne Arundel County, and I'm a retired federal employee. Thank you. Right, and uh, we should have joining us Kimberly Rose Cummings. Uh, she is in Dorchester County, I believe. She may be joining us a little bit later by phone. Jonathan? I'm Jonathan Fussfield. I'm a communications manager for a research firm in Bethesda, Maryland, and I'm a Montgomery County resident. Great, thank you. And next, William. Good evening, everyone. William Tipper Thomas. I am a senior principal engineer for the Department of Defense, and I'm a resident of Baltimore City. All right, thank you to all the commissioners who are here this evening. So uh, this is our second round of, uh, first round of public uh, meetings, uh, but it's the second one that we're having. Uh, last week, we uh, conducted our listening session with um, folks from the Eastern Shore. And tonight, uh, we are pleased to be able to listen to the uh, residents of Northern Maryland, Carroll, Cecil, Hartford counties. And um, we also know that anybody can join in. Uh, so we probably, I'm sure we'll have people from other counties as well. So the way this is going to work is that we are here to listen. Uh, it's not a Q&A. Uh, we really want to hear from you about um, what you think about redistricting, what you would like to see, uh, what concerns you had within the guidelines that Kristen mentioned when she started off. So Kristen will call a name and then you'll have your three minutes and then we'll move on to the next speaker. And again, thank you everyone for being here tonight. So Kristen. Thank you. Our first uh, speaker this evening is Jim Thornton. Um, Jim is from Harford County. Jim, you are now our panelist.
Good evening, commission members. My name is Jim Thornton, and on behalf of the Hartford County Caucus of African American Leaders, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. The caucus mission is to advocate for fairness, equity, and inclusion of African Americans in Hartford County. We began by commending Governor Hogan for establishing the commission as an essential part of the 2021 state redistricting process. This multi-partisan approach will help to promote fair and effective representation in the Maryland General Assembly and House of Representatives. Before I share my specific comments, I would like to express our appreciation to each of you for your time commitment to this critically important process, which takes place every 10 years. My brief comments speak to equity and flexibility. Hartford County was created by the state legislature in 1773. It was the sixth county created in Maryland, which at the time had a roughly a population of 3,000 people. Today, it has an estimated population of approximately 256,000. It is a county becoming more diverse, with over 20% of them being people of color. We know that there's also a representation uh, in terms of the hard to count, which was part of the 2020 census, which communities that rank high on the Center for Disease Control Social Vulnerability Index. These maps show that all too often, undercounted communities are also underserved. While all voices must be heard, some must be amplified. For the sake of equity, as new maps are drawn, we must all work together to engage these communities. Next, we recommend flexibility. As you tackle the question of single versus multi-member districts, it is our recommendation to merge District 34A and B into a single district with three at-large members. This structure will increase the possibility of a person of color being elected to the General Assembly. Hartford County has never had a person of color to serve in the General Assembly. Further, we recommend consideration be given to eliminate the representation made up of two counties. This type of configuration, unfortunately, leads to one of the counties receiving less than full attention of the elected officials in each of the respective counties. The current configuration has Hartford County sharing districts with Baltimore County to the west and Cecil County to the north. This alignment inherently creates losers and winners. Finally, we are grateful that even with your tie schedule, most of these listening sessions, Please continue to remind the public that people anywhere in the state have the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony, Mr. Thornton. Our next panelist is Edward Johnson. Mr. Johnson. You are now a panelist. Now you can hear me. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Edward Johnson, and I am co-leader of the Maryland Legislative Coalition, which was formed by grassroots groups across Maryland to advocate for legislation in the General Assembly. We promoted the commission hearings to over 75 political groups across Maryland with over 50,000 members. And I thank you all for taking on this major task. We understand that changing many of the gerrymandered districts is important. I have intended, I have intended all your meetings. Even though the word citizens is in the title of the commission, it still appears to be really the Hogan's Commission in all but name. First, he, first he put mandates on what you can consider then you have Secretary McCord sitting in, who is hardly bipartisan, nonpartisan, giving advice in many of the meetings. Have you asked the legislature to provide a representative to sit in and provide advice since this affects them immensely? I do not know if the legislature will send a representative, but unless you invite all stakeholders to participate and give their opinions during meetings of the commission, you are a Hogan's commission and not a nonpartisan citizens commission, which, which should be your intention. Also, I want to remind the commission what you are doing is not just moving around voting districts, but it can have an outsized effect on people's lives. 
many of the constituents that have had the same legislature, legislator for possibly as long as 20 years or more. Those legislators and their staff have helped them with social security, unemployment problems, and many other issues. They have forged relationships with their legislators as a constituent and have depended on them for help. Now you move people around into districts where they do not know the legislators and have to start all over again with an office they do not know. Please remember that your job is more than creating districts. You're affecting people's lives more than where they vote. When Hogan mandated the state board of elections that they could not mail ballots to every voter, they thought the outside the box and mailed applications to every voter. This actually led to a very successful election by thinking outside the, the box of this commission also needs to think outside the box that Hogan has put you in. I do not believe any other governor in any state with a redistricting put mandates on what the commission can and cannot consider. Governor Hogan did not trust his commissioners to make the right decisions without his mandates. Thank you for listening to what I had to say. Thank you. The next speaker, the next uh, speaker is Vantasha Sims from Charles County. Vantasha, you are now a panelist. Yes, hello everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, excuse me, my video is not on because I'm doing several things, but I'm, I am here. Um, first of all, let, let me say thank you for having this uh, meeting here. This is a very important issue, um, not only here in the southern part of the county, but throughout the state of Maryland. Uh, we are here because we have a lot of the same issues that other has, others has already raised. Uh, here in Charles County, we're in the southern Maryland region. Uh, we are not uh, uh, signified as a county on its own. Uh, we are lumped in with two uh, Republican uh, counties, uh, with Calvert and, and St. Mary's County. Uh, we are one of the fastest, fastest growing counties uh, in the state of Maryland. And we feel that we should not be divided. Uh, on one side, we're divided with Calvert and St. Mary's. On the other side, we're divided with Prince George's County. Uh, we're looking to really have our county as a whole. Uh, we're also looking to support others around the state uh, who are working towards making sure that we have appropriate redistricting, appropriate uh, uh, apportionment uh, as, as a, and opposed to our population. And we also would like to know uh, what exactly are the census results for our county? Uh, we haven't exactly gotten those numbers as of yet. Walter, I believe that Kate has dropped off. We have lost Kate. So uh, I'm going to thank uh, Vantasha Sims for the testimony. Um, uh, and um, uh, Kristen, who is the next scheduled speaker? The next speaker is Delegate Susan Krebs. Okay, uh, Delegate Krebs, you're, you're on deck if you... Delegate Krabs, you're now Delegate Krabs, you're now a panelist. Thank you. I assume you can hear me. I'm Delegate yes. Susan Krebs, and I represent Carroll County in District Five. And I just want to applaud Governor Hogan's appointment of this independent and bipartisan commission, which has been tasked to propose new maps after the 2020 census and to try to enact some uniform standards to guide the process. Uh, as I think many of us uh, would agree, redistricting reform in Maryland is desperately needed and has been overdue for decades. Maryland has been the leader in so many areas, but redistricting is not one. It's one where we lag woefully behind all of our other states with regards to a form, reforms. I'm gonna focus my oral comments on house legislative standards and will submit more comments to you all, including congressional redistricting and writing. Uh, first of all, I believe that each legislative delegate district shall be divided uniformly into three single member districts. Respect should be made for natural boundaries and boundaries of political subdivisions. As you all know, in Maryland, um, the county and including Baltimore City are meaningful, the boundary lines of the, of the uh, counties and the city and have historically been significant political units. I think there should be a high priority to minimize the splits between districts between the county and the city. Why do I support single member house districts? 
After the last um, redistricting in 2010, my compact community of Sykesville Eldersburg was unfairly split right down the middle and half was put in a large three member district, District 5, that extended 55 miles to the north to the Pennsylvania line. And the southern half of the district was attached to a two member legislative district that consisted mostly of Howard County residents, nothing against Howard County. All of the elected officials resided in Howard County. We also had the same um, to the west of us with a split um, over into Frederick County. So we, we have an 11 member delegation now, but only four of the people that represent Carroll County actually live in Carroll County. Needless County splits in districts makes it very hard to achieve strong ties between a county and its delegation and effective representation of county business in Annapolis. For example, each county has meetings with their local boards of education, our teachers union, our county officials, our community colleges, our hospital, our chamber of commerce, veterans group, farm bureau, disability advocates, and so on. Those who have to represent two counties have doubled the task. They have to attend to both, both set counties and sets of constituencies. And given that we're a citizen legislature and most legislators hold outside employment, attending to two counties is a, is a huge challenge and one gets left behind. Nationwide, the use of multi-member districts has declined dramatically over the last several decades. And this is in part because in some jurisdictions, they have been found to be discriminatory. Maryland is only one of two states in the United States that will have multi-member districts of different sizes in the whole country. Some will have one, some have one, some have two, and some have three member districts. This is, every other state has moved away from it except for New Hampshire and Maryland. Single member districts also allow for more minority majority thank, districts thank, to be thank, formed. Thank you, Delegate Krebs. We're, we're out of time, I'm afraid. Uh, you. We, we do look forward to your written uh, testimony. And uh, let me uh, remind all the speakers that uh, sending written testimony uh, is an excellent way to uh, bring the commission additional views and sometimes views that uh, just are more complicated or uh, um, uh, have more detail than the three minute format allows. So th thank you, Delegate Krebs, uh, for, for those comments. Um, Kate well, is sir, back, I'm back, so I'm going to hand the <laughs> microphone right back to Kate if that's okay with her. That is, and um, is the judge in? I see a telephone number here, is that the judge? Judge Williams? All right, we'll, we'll proceed. I hope Judge Williams is here. I got bumped to a um, member of the audience. I don't know what happened, but thanks for whatever you did to pull me back. <laughs> All right, let's 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 go. We were cooking. Okay. I can hear everything. You just couldn't see me. All right. Our next okay. speaker is Senator Justin Reedy. Senator, you are now a panelist. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you this evening about the important issue of redistricting. Thank you for all of all of you that are serving on this commission. And I appreciate that Governor Hogan has been fighting for nonpartisan redistricting. Uh, many, several other states are moving this way. And so we appreciate uh, the, I appreciate the opportunity to address you. I'm gonna just be very, uh, very direct. There are three main points uh, that I believe are crucial for Carroll County and the area I represent in District 5 and the whole county as we approach this once in a decade redistricting. On congressional redistricting, I believe statewide and particularly in my community, it's important that we focus on keeping communities together as much as possible. We know that the complications of congressional redistricting are it has to be down to the person. So there are going to be some squiggly lines and crossings but we have to, I, I, vitally important to keep communities together. Carroll County is currently split between two congressional districts. For the first, this last 10 years has been the first time that really had happened in any recent history. The first district runs from Tawny Town in our Western side of Carroll County, all the way to Ocean City and is primarily an Eastern Shore district uh, in Northeastern Maryland. The eighth district is worse. Over half of Carroll County is connected to a district where 70% of the population is in the inner DC suburbs. The district actually looks like the nation of Thailand if you look at it uh, standing alone. And uh, many of our congressional districts are absurdly shaped, um, even for a state like Maryland that is an unusual shape. Uh, we, I, it is my firm belief, and many of my constituents have expressed this to me directly, we should be restored to a congressional district that unites Carroll County and ideally ignites us with our fellow Western Maryland counties as was the case historically for many decades. On state legislative redistricting, 
I'm going to start with the Senate focus. Um, Carroll County appears, and we don't have all the numbers, but it appears that we're going to have the right population for one full state Senate district with enough left over for one more single member delegate district that could be attached to another Senate district in either Howard or Frederick County. Um, right now, though, there are with the roughly the same proportion population, there are parts of three Senate districts running into Carroll. My district takes up most of the county's landmass, which I think is good, but the, the Martin O'Malley gerrymander of 2012 put small pieces of Carroll County, as Delegate Krebs alluded to, in one part of the county, it's into a, a separate Senate district, and another little piece of the county in Mount Airy is in another separate district. It's nonsensical, and she illustrated why, as we have 11 members of the delegation, only four of us actually live in the county. Um, finally, with House of Delegates, uh, I'll submit more with my written comments, but Delegate Krebs made great points. There should be single member delegate districts in Maryland. It makes, it, it makes so much more sense for people to know who their delegate is and who they're voting for, rather than having some with all three, some with an A and B, and some with an ABC. So thank you very much. Thank you, Senator uh -huh. Reedy. Appreciate you participating tonight. Kristen, we'll take the next person. Our next speaker is Andrea Chambly or Chambly from Howard County. Andrea, you are now a panelist. Andrea, you're on mute. Andrea, you Thank want to unmute yourself? You. Thank you for having me. I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can now. Thank okay, you. Great. I can see you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. That's a great picture. I, I didn't want to take that down, but okay. Well, thank you again. Um, my name is Andrea Shambly. Um, I've lived in Maryland since I was two years old, and um, I grew up in the very homogenous Howard County back in the 70s. Um, I didn't know a Jewish person until I went to college. I, I think there were two Black people in, my, uh, in, in the two classes that I spent time with. Um, Howard County is very different now, and I'm, I'm in District 9A, um, and it has very diverse pockets and it has very uh, diverse interests. But um, 9A is not just Columbia and it's not just Western Howard County where I live now, it's Carroll County. And you've heard Carroll County explain its needs uh, for a representative that knows them. And, and so does Howard County. I, our district includes North Laurel, Columbia and Carroll County. And that's, that's impossible to represent the interests of, of those very different people. Um, I'm, um, I must admit, I'm unhappy with my representation, but I certainly expect that people in more Western part of the county deserve to be happy with their representation as well. And with this configuration, that just can't happen. So um, um, I wanted to appear to ask you to consider not splitting counties as you've heard from other folks, um, putting the uh, individuals and their communities together um, so that their interests can be properly attended to by their part-time legislators who have so many other challenges to, to face. So um, I just wanted to say that for your consideration and I thank you for making time for me and thank you for taking on this important task. Thank you, Ms. Shambly, so much for testifying tonight. Our next speaker is Will Zwart from Queen Anne's County. Will, oh, hold on. Will, you are now a panelist. Well, you'll need to unmute yourself. Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay, there it is. Uh, I'm in this Zoom thing. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, I guess I'll just say, hey, everyone. Um, my name is Will Zwart. I'm a uh, resident of Queen Anne's County. And um, well, I just want to encourage the redistricting because Maryland is the most gerrymandered state in the United States. And you can really see that if you look at the state. I mean, you have, you have counties that have been very obviously drawn so that voices are silenced in America. Um, 
and this is not what the founders intended. This is not, this is not a good thing. There, there are hundreds, if not thousands of people in Maryland who have no voice in their government. Um, I live, as I said, I live in Queen Anne's County. So I, I would say that I have a voice, um, at least in, in the state government um, and hopefully the, at the federal level as well. But there, there are so many, so many districts in Maryland where people are being ruled essentially by individuals far away who, who never met them, they don't know them, they don't know what their needs are, and they don't even see them as people, they just see them as dots on a map. Um, and this is of course what the founders fought the Revolutionary War for. There are a bunch of King Georges essentially in Maryland who rule a bunch of other people and not based on political parties, not based on race or color or creed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It is just because they are there at the top, they are the elites and we're at the bottom. So the, the redistricting, it, it has to be done. There are a lot of things that need to be done, I think right now, but making sure that everyone has a voice, everyone has a seat at the table is essential to ensure that we as a nation survive. So it just, it's not based on political lines. It's not based on who is right or wrong. It's just making sure that everyone has a voice and making sure that their delegates and the people who are representing them know them and know what their needs are and what, what they need to do as delegates, as representatives. And so everyone here is in a unique position a position that a lot of people around the world and in America itself would, would just walk through fire to be in because you guys have the ability to give people a voice, to give people representation. So I would just strongly encourage that to, to know who, whose needs are what and to make sure that, like I said, just everyone has a seat at the table and to make this country great again. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Zwart. Uh, and I want to note that Judge Williams is joining us by phone. Kristen, we'll take the next call, please. Next person, rather, please. Okay, <laughs> not a problem. Um, so just real quick, as I'm going through this, we do have um, uh, Delegate Marianne Lizanti um, up next. But just before I call her, I just want to go through a couple of names of individuals who were on the list who did not, um, who, who I don't have in the attendee box. So if you are on this call and you do still want to speak, if you could possibly raise your hand, um, that will identify you in our attendee list so that we may call on you. The names that I'm looking for are Watagoda, Watagoda Chaturanga, Dembe Ndaye, Ariel Haberman, Josh Barnes, Terry Stafford, Allison Galbraith, Michael McDowell, Delegate Matt Morgan, and with that, we will call on Delegate Marianne Lizanti for her remarks. Delegate Lizanti, you are now a panelist. Greetings, Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you for your service to the great state of Maryland and to its people. The task before you is complex, but your work is noble. My testimony this evening consists of observations, historical contents, and things to think about. My comments are offered tonight as a political scientist, not in the interest of a political party, but to advocate for what I believe is best for the citizens and the public good. Having served in a legislative body at the local level, I am well aware of the obstacles that you must face. It is notable from my research that until the last two redistricting cycles, all legislative districts in Maryland had three members. Still today, 31 of 47 legislative districts remain three members, that's 66%. Why are 16 districts different? Does that serve the public good or does it create division? One could assume that these districts were created 
at one time for maybe political, social, economic, or other reasons. Do those reasons still exist? Does it make for good policy? Of the 16 districts without three members, do they have equal representation in the Maryland General Assembly? You know, it takes more than one person to pass a bill. Eight of the 16 non-three member districts represent one county. The other eight represent multiple counties, like the rest of the legislature. Why such a difference? If you look closely at those 16 districts, which I urge you to do, a story emerges. Addis additionally, as you create districts, I, I challenge you to dispel old assumptions and outdated definitions of community. Communities have changed. I will leave you finally with a few observations. One, the best state policy is made when legislators are forced to listen and work with others whose experiences and life's path is different from theirs. Finally, I'd like to advocate that we go back to a three member house districts for all focused on balance and equal representation. It is not fair for some of our citizens to have three members uh, in, the, in the Maryland General Assembly and others to have one. If you live in one of those districts with only one representative, do you actually have the same level of support that you would if you didn't? And who, um, and finally, what, what, what are you to do if you only have one member and that person is not open to your concerns? Thank you very much for the opportunity to share my thoughts with you this evening. Thank you, Delegate Lasante. Um, another speaker that we cannot identify in the uh, attendees list, if you are present, please raise your hand, is Senator Addie Eckert. Um, moving on from that, we would be calling our last speaker, Mark Dyer of Carroll County. Mark, you are now a panelist. Yes, thank you. My name is Mark Dyer and I'm from Carroll County and um, I'll make it short. Um, I'd like to thank you for what you're doing. Um, I'm a political independent. I'm not a member of either party. And it's frankly a national disgrace for Maryland to be as gerrymandered as it is. It's imperative that you succeed. I wish you every success. I would comment one thing, this personal preference. I do think having representation based on county, it makes more sense because we tend to fall into those enclaves. Um, but again, thank you very much for doing this. And I hope, I wish you every success. Thank you, Mr. Dyer. Kristen, do we have anyone else ready to testify? I do not believe that we have not received any requests in the chat box. And I do not see any hands up on in the attendee list. Maria, can you confirm that, please? I can. There has been no request in the chat box, and there are no hands raised as well. OK. All right. So with that, we have completed our list of speakers for this evening. And there All are right. none on deck. All right. Well, thank you for checking. And thank you, Maria, too, for your help. Uh, just to remind the audience uh, that they're welcome to listen in or testify on the 23rd of June when we'll have the um, next region, Southern Maryland, which is Calvert, Charles, and St. Mary's counties. But again, anybody from, from throughout the state can participate. And uh, we welcome your testimony. We learn every week more and more from listening. And that's what these sessions are about. We are here to listen. So with that, since we have no one else, this is a meeting. Uh, so I ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, Thank you, William. All so in I favor? Was, I was, oh, I was, I was point of information, I guess. Okay, sure. Go ahead. I thought the last time we met on Friday, we had a discussion about you know, waiting uh, a couple minutes after everyone had the opportunity to speak in case someone was having technical difficulties and allowing 
you know, as many people as possible to be able to speak. We didn't define what, how long we were going to wait until after the last person to ask that question. But I re do remember there being some discussion about at least waiting until the seven o'clock hour uh, that we didn't do the previous meeting. So I just wanted to make okay. sure. Great. Well, that's that's good. Um, I wasn't at the meeting and I didn't see the feedback from that meeting. <clears throat> so uh, sorry about that. But um, we can wait. Does five minutes seem reasonable? And I, I will say that we, um, I believe, and um, Maria or John, if you can confirm this, um, or I can look it up as well, that we did take an end time off of the agenda for, for this meeting. Um, the issue last week was that our meeting indicated that it was from six until eight. And um, it still yeah. says that in a calendar, um, on the calendar invite, because that is um, just how Zoom creates it. Uh, however, on the agenda, um, let me just see if that had been. Yeah, it just it indicates on the agenda that it starts at six. It doesn't have an end time. Um, so one of the things that, that we discussed as far as making sure that people had their time to speak was that they didn't think that they could join at 730 because the meeting was right. going till eight. So we did we did take that end time. Oh, off of OK, the well, that's good. Yeah. So William, are you suggesting, or maybe the group suggesting we made a little while longer? Or yeah, I think that was that was the feedback that I had gotten from people okay. who we that we waited a little a little longer before we. Sure. Meet. So I like I said, I, we had decided how long that grace period was going to be, um, but I just feel like we should wait at least you know a couple minutes. Sure, we can. Does five minutes sound okay to everybody? All right. Well, you could take a quick bio break if you want. We can hold on here till five more minutes. <clears throat> All right. I have 645. How about if we wait till 650? Okay. I'm going to um, just bring in Secretary McCord here um, to allow him to talk. Um, I will promote him. He had to use his uh, wife's computer. So um, Secretary McCord, I've promoted you to a panelist. Kristen, we do have it. Kristen, we do have a hand raised. Okay. Do we have the name of the person? Patricia Grimes. Okay, Ms. Grimes. Ms. Grimes, been... hold on, I'm gonna allow you to speak. Ms. Grimes, you can unmute. I unmuted. Um, thank you for the opportunity for my voice to be heard. Um, this is a very interesting process. I was not aware until the last speaker, and I forget her name, talked about um, different districts having different numbers of representatives. Um, Ms. Grimes, you were muted again. I'm unmuted, I'm unmuting, and I had some kind of technical difficulty, of, of course. So, um, my comments are, I'm a Harford County resident. I was not aware until the last speaker spoke uh, about the, that there are only some districts that have one representative versus three representatives. Um, and just a question, how long has that been? Forever in Maryland history? Ms. Grimes, we're um, we're here really to listen tonight and not do Q and A. And okay, okay, I'm yeah. sorry. So just, sorry. no, that's fine. That's fine. Any any ideas that you have or thoughts about redistricting, we'd be more than happy to listen to them tonight. Well, certainly, I support I support that very clear scientific presentation about 
how districts are represented. That was probably the most beneficial presentation of the evening. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I support all districts having equal representation and three representatives from each, each district. Why not? Why wouldn't you do that? So that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'm done. All right. Thank you, Ms. Grimes, for your testimony. Thank you for being here tonight. Kristen, do we have anyone else with a hand raised or? No, we'll not as of yet. All right, we'll hang in here for a few more minutes. Secretary McCord, do you have any updates for the commission that you'd like to share? I'm showing up as Allison McCord at the moment. Do you see that? Uh, the yes. That's my, <laughs> I was wondering who my, that was. Okay. <laughs> no, that's it. That's my 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 state computer um, wasn't didn't keep me in the on the screen, and um, it dropped me and then dropped the connection totally. So I I went to the the household computer. So I kicked my wife out of the out of the office and jumped in front of it. Um, we are as um, as the department. Um, Finishing up trying to have the Maptitude available to you and have the um, have a map available to you that will show current districts, both congressional and legislative, and have a a um, let me see here and try to have a um, uh, congressional, legislative, and the Senate districts available to you and have the census map um, overlay so that you could see by census track. Um, which tracks make up the districts, and all with the caution that those those some of those census geographies will change, and of course all the numbers within the tracks will change. So um, there you go. The camera finally kicked in. Um, so uh, um, we are closing in on having that available for you, and um, um, I should be looking at the final versions of that this week. So uh, uh, the day after it's available, if we made available to you, so uh, um, we will give you all those tools as soon as they're available, but the, the data, um, the state data center team is working on those things. I saw some prototypes of that, and I think they'll be helpful to you. And you realize that it'll help you with the organizing principles that you're, you're working under the executive order and the concepts that you're trying to accommodate based on the testimony that you're hearing. Um, you will be able to start to visualize that on a map that you'll be able to uh, manipulate. So um, I'm, I'm very close to be able to give you those tools. Thank you, Secretary McCord. I know everyone looks forward to that, getting that information. All right, um, we're at we 650. Also, we do have a meeting tomorrow of the population subcommittee um, at, at noon tomorrow. Is there anything that any of you need from us prior to that meeting? Mary, Jonathan? Uh, we did send out two read-aheads that everyone should have received. One was a draft scope of the work of uh, our subcommittee, and the other was a um, information about which counties have gained and lost population in the, over the last 10 years, just to give us a rough estimate of which counties, uh, you know, change the most. So that's for us to begin talking about tomorrow, but we, nothing is finalized until the subcommittee meets, so. Okay. And um, once you do have your meeting tomorrow, um, if you, once you vote on the scope of the committee, um, then we can post that document to the website for the public. Um, the other document, I assume, the other document is is public information, and and we can go ahead and post that uh, to the meeting section uh, for tomorrow's meeting as well. You have everything you need, then, Kristen, to to post the other spreadsheet. I believe so. Yeah, as long as uh, Secretary McCord's group takes, uh, make sure my I didn't transpose any numbers or do any bad arithmetic. I'd be more than happy having it shared. And also, um, I think it, we also need to clarify that those are still draft numbers below the state level for districts, correct? Yes, that's correct. So um, yes, please 
if uh, if you guys need to um, do anything to make it more useful to the public before it's posted, I'd be in favor of that as well because it's just data. It's not any. It's not any real deliberation. Of course, we'll we'll suggest the, the proper cautionary language for that. No problem. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> question. Oh, William. Yes, go ahead, William. Do we intend to have another? <clears throat> excuse me. Um, working session as a commission coming up soon. Outside of the public hearings. Well, they're all public. Uh, yeah. Um, so one outside, of the things. Yeah. Session. So, um, William, I, I'm going to have uh, Walter speak more to that as well. But um, one of the things that I'm sure that Secretary McCord um, could attest to as well is that um, we're starting to get some more tools available um, for us to be able to provide you um, just to kind of to help you understand how to kind of start getting the process going. And that should be um, within with hope the coming days. So you'll get an update sometime probably either um, tomorrow or Friday or at the very latest Monday with regard to um, some additional tools that we might be able to provide you and some additional training and some dates for that as well. Um, but I'll pass that over to Walter to speak more on that. Well, I, I was going to mention a separate point, which is there's at least one pending matter, which is the um, prospect of appointing a South Asian advisor. And we have kept open until this coming Friday, uh, possible applications of uh, persons interested in that. Um, I don't think, and Kristen can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's possible to predict for sure exactly how long it might take to process or vet or whatever it is. So rather than call a meeting and then find that we called it a day too early, I thought that for that purpose, it's best to, to wait and see uh, whether there's one, five or whatever, and whether any of them uh, produce uh, delays in, in that vetting process that we need to hear from the planning on before we, we can go forward. Yes. Okay, that's fine. I was just um, wondering, because I had a question about you know, a process, but I'll wait until we have that meeting set. Don't, don't hesitate to ask the questions through uh, I, either here and now or through uh, email. Uh, where you know, we can't transact business uh, by email, but we certainly can air questions about, uh, the, and, and, you know, it depends on what you want to ask, but uh, that, it's a good way of getting questions answered and it's a good way of suggesting future agenda items. So don't hesitate. Okay. Well, I do have a question about um, <clears throat> my worst case scenario, um, if something were to happen to any of us as commissioners, that we were no longer able to fulfill our duties as a commissioner, do we have alternates, you know, lined up in place or identified to be able to step in? Have they been, you know, listening along the way? Like, what did that process look like? Well, we don't have alternates and um, I don't know, Secretary McCord or Kristen, I would assume that it would have to go through the governor's office in terms of the, Maybe recommendations. I, I, I for believe going in, back. The, in the governor's executive order, there is language about if a vacancy occurs, the governor will appoint uh, the replacement. Uh, yeah. And it's obviously a challenge for a new person uh, to catch up with. Um, it, you know, the, the videos are there, but it's going to take a while to to uh, to watch the videos. So, uh, you know, let's all hope that uh, we aren't placed in that situation. But the uh, it's, it's in the governor's office's uh, uh, authority to give us new commissioners if we lose any. Okay. And hopefully that won't happen. Right, you know. Mm -hmm. But, but I get, you know, it's good to have plan B. Right. Like and, and everything, everything is, um, we do have recordings of, of all of our meetings thus far. Okay. okay. All right. So Kristen, uh, does anyone else have a hand raised or nothing? All right. So I had a, a motion and um, Walter, you had uh, moved that motion forward. And I, William, were you planning to second that motion to adjourn sure, the meeting? <laughs> All right, great. 
Well, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you to the members of the public that are still on. I see we have quite a few people still on. And uh, just a reminder, um, you're more than welcome to come back this time next week, starting at six o'clock, where we're looking at Calvert, uh, people from Calvert, Charles, St. Mary's counties, but again, anybody from the state of Maryland can chime in. So thank you all for taking the time and your commitment to this process. And thank you so much to the commissioners. So good night, everybody. Good night. <clears throat> good night. Good night, thank you. I usually just stay on until people fall. <laughs>